Today we're going to look at one of these TFT LCD screens. So let's start by setting it up. Is that it? Hi and welcome to Extronical. Uh, in this episode we're going to look at one of these uh, little colour uh, TFT LCD displays. Um, I bought this, uh, I don't know, three or four months ago um, for around uh, $3.53, €3.50, around £3.20 I think it was thereabouts. I think they're a little bit more expensive now, the last looked, uh, getting towards uh, $4 or €4 Euros or so. Um, and I said, I bought, it, I bought it a while back and I've just got around to sort of like connect it up. I've got a project in mind for it that I want to do. Um, if you watch my other series on Space Invaders, I've got another arcade game I want to do that is, is in colour. Uh, and when I was looking for this, I ideally wanted um, a 256 by 256 display um, OLED, if I could, uh, quite reasonably priced if I could, uh, for around, I thought maybe around uh, uh, £3, three euros, three dollars. Um, but that, was, that proved impossible. I couldn't get an OLED uh, of that resolution for anywhere near the right price. So in the end, I settled on this, which is it's really quite a cheap screen. Uh, but it's 128 by 128 pixels square, um, which most arcade games back in the early 1980s would have been around um, 256 by 256 maximum, generally speaking. Um, so I'm hoping that if I can just half the graphics in width and height, I shouldn't have to fiddle with them too much, which is where the time comes in. Um, so I won't tell you what project I'm, I'm working on yet, we'll uh, get around to that in the near future. But yeah, so I bought this screen, and I thought, fine. Uh, it arrived, I thought this will be easy to connect up, as most things are that you get for the Arduino, it's marked as working with Arduino. Um, so I came to look on the back, and we'll have a look at what's on the back here. So we've got various um, connections, I haven't got my local pointer just handy, I'm just going to see if I can Okay, I've got it. So uh, it's got various connections on the back. You've got some unsoldered uh, ones here as well. You could put your own header on if you wanted to. And it came with this header already soldered on. So you can see we've got um, 5 volts uh, in there. And on this side, if you wanted to, you could run it from 3.3 volts. So obviously it'll be a 3.3 volt chip. Uh, well, that'll be the... Um, this is all to do with the power conversion. I'll explain why in a, in a, in a minute. Um, and obviously if you go in this side, it's obviously regulating it down to 3.3 volts for the screen. So 5 volts, um, some ground, uh, no connections, LED, which is actually for the light of the display. I found that even if you don't connect it up, the actual LED glows dimly-ish, and to be honest, it's, it's, it gives the display a reasonable brightness. If you connect it up, it gives it a little extra brightness, but not much. Um, I've seen somewhere they've connected a, resi a resistor in series with that, maybe in a potentiometer, so they can adjust the brightness. It's really not really, for this particular screen, it certainly wasn't uh, required. I've run this for several days, not switched off, connected direct to 5 volts on that, and yeah, no problems. Uh, then we had SCL and SDA. Now, SCL and SDA are the um, terms for uh, I2C. Um, and then we've done some extra connections here, which I wasn't really clear what they were. CS usually stands for chip select, RSD is usually reset, and then RS, well, I don't know, I think it was reset if it didn't have that one already there. Um, so I, I, I tried connecting up on his I2C device, I was looking at some example code from Adafruit, from other sources, couldn't get this thing to do anything. Um, went back to the seller's page and discovered on it that it said it was actually an SBI interface. Um, so with some more rummaging around the internet, and this did take me um, an amount of time to sort out. Um, it was obviously going to be SBI connection, so that was going to be clock, I was guessing with SCL for serial clock, something like that might stand for. That was obviously going to be the data, and I presume it was going to be mozzy for the SBI interface. These three, um, I wasn't sure about, but CS, on SBI there is slave select, so chip select, that made sense that was going to be slave select to me. These two I didn't know, and on further investigation, these turned out to be specific to the actual driver chip, the 7735, which I didn't even know the driver chip of this device. I tried looking at the chip code of this, this is not the 7735 uh, TFT controller at all, uh, it was something else. Um, and I found out, and again, going back to the listing, it said 7735 drive, so I presume it was 7735 driver chip. Went looking around for that and found that it should have 
a, a line that uh, decides whether it's got um, whether you're writing to the registers or you're sending it to data. So with a bit of rummaging and logical thought that that might stand for register select. So uh, using the Adafruit code, they use something called DC for sort of like maybe data connect. I'm not sure, but they seem to be using it a similar way to this. So I connected that to the uh, DC pin that the Adafruit code required. This was obviously still reset, which again uh, the Adafruit code used to reset the uh, display. So when I got all those connected and used the Adafruit code, I got a display up. There were further problems, it wasn't quite right, um, but we'll go into them later. So I'll bring up a little thing on screen now and I'll bring my breadboard over and we'll get connecting these up, uh, showing the connections that I actually got. So I'll put a little table up in the corner somewhere and we'll connect this up to the breadboard, power it up and run the Adafruit demo and you'll see the problems that occur. So what we're going to do, we're going to quickly connect this up to the uh, screen which we've got here. I've already connected in the wires to the relevant pins on the Arduino. Um, so we'll start off going down the, the LCD screen connections down here. So 5 volts is the first one we need. Obviously if you're working with a 3.3 volt microcontroller you'd want to put a header pin on here and connect it up but if, uh, there but in a very similar way. So 5 volts to there which have gone from red uh, and then ground. I have got to ground with black. There's two ground pins obviously you'll need to connect to either one of them. Um, then we've got two um, no connections quite a bit of shadow on here as well from the lighting so two no connections and I've got an LED which I've just connected straight to 5 volts I've ran that for several days non-stop and it's had no problems whatsoever it does add a little bit of extra brightness to it um, and we've got SEL which is the um, hardware clock for the SBI which is on the Arduino Nano and Uno is D13 different on the Mega can't remember the pin out so you'd have to have a look so a hardware clock to D13 uh, and then what is it effectively uh, Mossy, Mossy, however you want to pronounce it, uh, SDA, SDA D3, D11, sorry, on the uh, Arduino, which is, I've got that to, on my white wire, so get that up to that. Um, RS, if I said is register select, or it's DC, available called DC in the Adafruit code, which may be data control, I'm not sure. Um, but it, it, basically, when that's pulled low, uh, the chip knows that you're sending some sort of command to the LCD rather than actual data and you can connect that to any, any you want um, it, there's no hardware sort of um, setting for that like with the MOSI and the uh, clock they need to run really fast so it's, it's good to have them in hardware these don't need to run as fast for register select and select so in the example code I was using from Adafruit it was connected to D8 so I've kept it the same so D8 would be my green wire Get that on. Uh, RSD is simply reset, which uh, again in the sample code is D9, so I've kept that the same, which would be the yellow wire. And CS chip select, which is basically slave select for, uh, for SBI, uh, it's connected to D10, so I can add to D10. And if I quickly connect that up to the computer, I can just find my USB cable, there it is. Then there's already some sample code in there for info when I've been uh, setting this up earlier. So if I just plug that in, I'll turn it over and hold it steady. You should see some sample code boot up and run. If I've connected everything right. There we go. So put it that way. This is your orientation. Uh, and this is all perfect. You'll notice that every graphic, every bit of text is fitting on screen nicely. Um, this is actually running um, my particular code and also, as I say, there's various problems with the driver code as originally used in this. So I've um, used that driver code as a base and then I've actually uh, edited it. As you can see, it's actually going that way now. It started the demo again, but now it's orientating it that way and then it'll go from the bottom as well. Um, which is not surprising there was a problem. This was written by Adafruit for their particular uh, breakout board. Um, not for these cheap generic LCDs, but they use the same driver chip, which is why the code um, kind of works. I'm going to show you, I'm going to load the Adafruit code into here in a, in a short time. I'll show you the faults, the problems it had, not the code itself, it's just the fact the code is not designed to work with this particular screen. So I altered it uh, a little bit and then we got to working with these cheap screens. Okay, so what I've done now uh, for convenience of displaying it on the video, I've actually um, put it onto a breadboard 
weighed it incorrectly. You can see why I didn't do this early. It's hard, you can't see the connections connected to. It's easier to do it the other way around, connecting with the longer wires onto the back of the screen. Um, but this is far more easier, uh, convenient to display. Um, so we're going to move on. It, when you've wired it up and you've got no uh, software to drive this, uh, the screen, you'll just see it lit up white like that. That's normal. Um, and then what you need to do is to actually uh, get some software. So we'll start off with what, like I did. Uh, I went over to Adafruit. In fact, I, I did both at the same time. I was trying to get the hardware right as I was trying to get the, the software to run it right. But I started off getting the Adafruit software. Wouldn't drive the board. I mean, cost, it wasn't wired correctly. That was one of the problems. I had to do an awful lot of searching on the internet for different boards, different driver chips, different naming conventions, just trying to get clues about what was happening here uh, until eventually I sorted it out. So I went along uh, and as usual, I'd, I went, you know, Adafruit, and you can see where I've been typing before, GitHub 7735, because it's a 7735 driver chip. Uh, looking on the seller's listing, that's how I find that out. Uh, otherwise, I wasn't, I'm not, I, I haven't used one of these type of LCDs before. I didn't know, I never heard of the 7735. But once I saw that it said 7735, I started looking for 7735 uh, driver software. So I went along to the GitHub Adafruit site and I downloaded it. And I've cleaned out my install of the Arduino software. Um, so it should install as if it's not been done before. So we're going to go to include library, add zip, and downloads. Oops, wrong one. Downloads. And the Adafruit library. It shouldn't take too long to install. It has done so. Then I went to Sketch, and we'll, this will show you the problems I had. Um, because once I got the wiring correct, um, oh, I'm doing that wrong. Sorry. File examples, and down to the bottom here, uh, and graphics test. Once I got the wiring right, the demo displayed graphics and text on the screen, but it didn't look right. Um, I'm just going to put some longer delays in some of the code so we can see what's going on. Um, do, 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 just looking for it. Um, there's some text that comes on the screen. Um, I want about four or five seconds um, delay between each uh, item happening. And do, 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 test lines, that's okay. Um, well, we'll put some long delays in most of them. So I've put five second delays after each sort of task. That should be okay. And upload that to, us, to our board. You can see the spurious .git, .git up folder. Uh, while it's come up there. Um, I'll put a link up in the description below um, now. Sorry, not in the description below, but a link up on the screen now um, showing you how to remove that one and if you're not sure what it is. So it's uploading. We'll have a look at our screen. So I'll bring that up on the screen. I'll just reset that and we'll start it again from the beginning. So we're looking at this when it starts running it again. We've got some text on here. Uh, believe me, there is some missing off the top. It's not easy to see because obviously it's in Latin or whatever it might be. Um, and we've got some text missing off the top of here. That is, there should be more information. That, that should be further down the screen. Uh, this is fine. These lines fill the screen perfectly. That's how they should be. Nothing wrong with that demo. It's not like all, all the demos are wrong. Some are right, some are wrong. Squares, perfect. This bit's not right. There is a gap here and it's been shoved off at the top. So that's been sort of scroll, uh, moved up the top. Same with these. Clipped off at the top, moved up from the bottom. Um, circles, they've been a bit missing here. They should be the red one should be more over that way. Uh, this is filling to the bottom fine, but it's clipping at the top. So there's various issues that come up. And as again, oh, and there we go. We've got the clipping of the triangle at the top. The triangle should fit on the screen perfectly. Um, nothing to do with the software. I'm using the Adafruit software. It's perfect. It works fine if you have their board. It was never designed to work with these. That's not the point of it. Um, but it was a good starting point to get this right. Also, these colors aren't right. When I was doing it, it reds were blues, blues were reds. It's, um, it just wasn't quite correct. Um, so basically, to cut the long story short, I went into the Adafruit software, um, had a look at it corrected and altered it to work with this screen not corrected that's not the right word because it wasn't wrong to start with but altered it to work with this screen i did a fork on github so it's now forked for basic i put it down as basic chinese well not chinese but basic um cheap screens um but most of us get them from china i mean i got this one from china from aliexpress um so it's basically cheap screens 
should work with most of them. If you've got a different resolution, it probably well, it won't do, but I don't need a little bit of tweaking. I've only got this one example screen at the moment. I'll get more in the future, and I'll alter the core to work with various size screens and different types of screens as I go along for these cheaper screens. So that's what's wrong. I'll quickly upload my software. So if we now need to go to find the software, you just need to go to Extronical. And you can see I've already written about it here. And if you scroll down, if my computer wasn't so laggy, scroll down and you'll find towards the bottom I have a link there we go to the um, library that I wrote it's also on github I've put it on github the github link is is there as well um, so click that download it which is done back to your Arduino software and add library and downloads so my version, it's Tronical version, it should work with these type of cheap screens. When I bought this on AliExpress, I had a picture of a small cartoon boy on. There was a lot like that from various different sellers with the cartoon boy. And if you get that, and obviously check the connections at the back, if the connections are all the same labels, you likely got pretty much the same screen as me, and this software will work fine. So that's installed. So we need to go File, Examples. Uh, come down here, to Tronical. You can't just see it, it's just off screen. Um, I'll just see if I can actually get that to come on. I can't get that on screen, kind of from here. I don't think. So you're gonna have to go example. Have to believe me, it's there. Go down. If you scroll down through, down through the examples here, come to the bottom. Extraical ST seven seven three file library. Go into that. There's one called Graphics Test. Just the one test. Load that up. Uh, my test is is based on much of the Adafruit test. But what I do, I rotate the screen. Um, so it prints going down the screen to start with. Then it does a nine degree shift and does the exact same demo. We'll see that in a minute. Um, also when you did rotate the screen on the Adafruit software, because there's a command that says rotate the screen to do it display in different orientations. Some of the demos corrected themselves, other ones went wrong. It was a bit of a mess, so I corrected that as well. So let's upload that. Okay, so now look, all the text was on screen. All this text, you can see what was missing at the top there is on screen. Um, all correctly. This was always correct, still correct. And then that was always correct. Now this wasn't correct, this was shifted up. Circles were a little bit off. And now you've looked, they're around, rectangles are all in, the triangles are all in, all fitting neatly in the screen. And then it's going around, it's rotating. So now it's going to print it from that direction, go through all the um, example code from that direction, and then it'll actually do it from the bottom upwards. So you can, in software, you can orientate it in any which direction you want, which is quite a handy feature perhaps for some applications. We'll just watch it one more time. It's coming towards the end, so the right one then, yeah, invert that way, and the test will go on like that, going upwards like that. Um, so that's it. It was quite a bit of a job to do. Um, I can't guarantee, as I said earlier, that this would work with any of the screens. Um, but go along to Extronical. So yeah, you go along to Extronical, and all the code is there, um, with full explanations. And these screens, as I say, they're quite cheap for what they do and you're having trouble with these before hopefully this will sort that out for you and um, that's all for now uh, like subscribe and i'll see you next time